Hey everyone, Mitchell here from thehockeyrefbook.com. This video we're going to talk about positioning for the referee in the three official system. So where we're going to start today is with this triangle, which you will have seen before if you watch any of my other videos, because these are the skills that you need in order to referee, officiate, or line a hockey game. You need positioning to see the play and stay out of the way. You need procedures to work with your partners and you need game management in order to bring the skills together, know how to talk to others, use penalties, make offside calls, use presence on the ice, and of course professional skills exist all the way around the pyramid in order to help you develop those skills inside that pyramid. But we're always looking at these skills to see the full tool belt that a referee, lines person, or official is going to need in order to manage a hockey game. In this video, we're going to talk about positioning for the three for the referee and the three official system. In this video, we're going to go over entering the zone, we're going to go over pursuit of play, and we're going to go over end zone positioning. And when we start to understand those three skills, you'll be very ready to try refereeing a hockey game in the three official system. The other reminder that I want to give you before we jump into this is the idea of imagining yourself actually doing these things. So if there's opportunities for you to close your eyes or ever imagine what it's like to apply these skills, the sounds of the game, what it looks like in practice, that's going to build neurons in your brain. It's going to give you the opportunity to be better prepared to actually be on the ice implementing these skills. So as we go through this, let's focus on also what it could look like or sound like. In order to help you do that, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to try to run through this in a sequential order. So rather than just saying this is end zone positioning, bang, 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 and this is your pursuit of play, bang, 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 I'm gonna to try to run through it as though it's an actual game that we are following through as the puck goes up and down the ice and you follow the play and put yourself in a position to have success. So we're gonna start with a center ice face-off. Now normally center ice face-offs would take place with procedures because that's part of starting play and procedures are both stopping play, managing stoppage and starting play again. You'll notice that in the bottom left corner of this slide, there's a page number. Most of the slides are gonna have page numbers that relate to the book, How to Referee Hockey. It's not just about the rule book. You'll notice that center ice face off is, is around pages 126. And the other skills that we're going to talk about in this in this video are going to be much lower page numbers because again, center ice face off falls into the category of a procedure, not necessarily positioning. So let's get this game started with the puck drop at center ice. The two lines people are lined up at either blue line, right where they're supposed to be. The puck gets dropped and we're going to say it gets one back to the defense person on the right side of the screen and then the, and then the puck gets played up the ice. That allows lines person one on the left side of the screen to make a judgment of onside or offside and the referee is just able to back up and then follow the play up the ice. So we're going to start here with that puck in the zone and we now have to make a decision about how to enter the zone. There's two options to entering the zone. Let's talk about this first one. So this first one of the two options actually has three options for how you're going to enter the zone. Now in this example that we had from center ice, we know that the puck ended up in the zone down by that circle. So the first option is for you to come straight into the zone to the bottom of the circle. This is called half piston. We'll talk more about end zone positioning in a few slides, but really what you're doing is you're going straight to the position that matches wherever the puck is. So this black official here with the puck on the far side of the ice is gonna to go to the bottom of that circle, straight into the zone. Second option for entering the zone is if the puck is on your side of the ice, like for this blue, for this blue dot here, blue puck, sorry, you're gonna go into home base. So over against the boards, halfway between the hash marks and the goal line. Third option is if the puck goes straight to the net, so now it's right here, and you're gonna go to an at the net position. So just straight to that at the net position. So those are your three options for entering the zone. Go straight to home base, go straight to at the net, or go straight to half piston, depending on where the puck is in the zone. And we will look at that again in, uh, in a couple of slides to better help you understand those end zone positioning. But for now, understand that you can go straight to any one of your three positions in the end zone. So option one, get straight there. Go there, fight there, make it your space, 
don't let players get in the way, get to your end zone positioning. Option two is to stop at the blue line, and this is used in a very specific situation. Imagine the puck is coming around the boards like this, and it gets stuck over there along the boards, along that half wall, kind of in the area where you want to go in. So we have this gray box. I'm just going to put this here because anytime that puck is in that box, it's also going to be in your way for where you want to be when the puck's on your side of the ice. So here's the referee coming in. Instead of going into the zone, into that box, because we know that the first option of going in is to get to your end zone positioning, this referee is going to stay at this blue line. So th there's the referee at the blue line. If the lines person is at this blue line as well, the referee will stand a little bit further back and give the lines person that line, but is able to also step out from the boards to create a better angle to see the play. But we're going to stop this blue line in order to give us the best angle on the plane to allow us to stay outside of the outside of outside of the outside of the line. So there's two possible endings here uh, for you to leave this blue line. First ending is for the breakout to happen, and if that breakout happens and we go to the far side of the ice, then we're just going to follow the play up the ice like that, curl and follow the play up the ice. The second possibility is for that puck to leave that box, which would allow us to go right down into that position halfway between the goal line and the hash marks. So that really gives us, remember, two endings. Either we curl and follow the play up the ice, or else the puck leaves that gray box, and then we can go into the end zone and take up our end zone positioning as necessary. There's one thing we absolutely cannot do as the referee coming into the zone, and you can't stop between the blue line and the piston system. The piston system, of course, is those three positions that end up down here when the puck's in the end zone. So the problem with this, let's put this back up here again. The problem with this situation is that if we were to come down into this area here, put a red box here just to highlight it, you're gonna end up getting in the way of this breakout. So we never wanna come down and stop halfway between the blue line and the hash marks we want to commit and get into our end zone positioning or, or we want to stay above that blue line. So there are your options. One, get into the zone, get into your end zone positioning, or two, stop at the blue line until that corner area clears for you to take up your end zone positioning or follow the play off the ice. Okay, so let's imagine that the puck is moving up the ice on the breakout, the team successfully got the puck out, and you've now curled, as we can see here, you've curled to follow the puck up the ice. So there goes the puck, you curl and you follow it up. When we're following the play through the neutral zone, we always want to try to be one to two lines behind. So if you take a look at this situation, we have the red line and we have the blue line. So that's one to two lines behind, really two lines behind the play. As the puck goes to the next blue line, you are gonna to get to the red line and again, that puts you one to two lines behind the play. Puck now goes deep into the far zone. You're gonna to get to that blue line. You're not gonna stop at the blue line, but we're just gonna pause. But again, you're about one line behind the play now, one to two lines behind the play. That's always what we're aiming for as we follow that puck up the ice. So that's called gap control, uh, staying a good distance behind the play so you can see as much as possible, but also stay out of the way of the play at the same time. So let's imagine that the puck has now established itself in that end zone, just like we saw it happen in the previous slide. And we're gonna talk about end zone positioning. So here's the referee coming into the zone now, and she's gonna set up at the bottom of that circle because the puck is on the far side of the ice. This first position, bottom of the circle, is called half piston. So half piston takes place with the puck on the far side of the ice. The referee picks up, sets up at the bottom of the circle. Now imagine that that puck goes on net, the referee now goes to an at the net position and then that puck stays loose and bounces back over towards the boards. The referee can now go back to the home base position. So we have home base, puck on your side of the ice. At the net, the puck is in the crease. Half piston, the puck's on the far side of the ice. Just like that. Now it's also possible for you to go below the net 
you can go below the net when you need to get out of the way or else get a better view of what it is that's happening at the net for a goal mouse scramble. Those are the two reasons, get out of the way or get a better view. You always want to get back to home base half piston at the net. That piston system as fast as possible because you don't want to get stuck below the net because there's less room to maneuver and less room to stay out of the way of the play or else a puck that's being shot from the slot. So use below the net, but also get back to your piston system as fast as possible when it's safe to do so. So that's end zone positioning. We can see the green, so uh, pucks on your side of the ice, you're looking at green, green, home base, half piston is purple when the puck's on the far side of the ice, and then at the net when the puck's at the net, and you can also go below the net when needed. The fifth skill for end zone positioning is called the bump and pivot. When we're talking about the bump and pivot, it occurs along the boards with the puck on the same side of the ice as you. So this is really a skill of you managing home base. If you take a look at these images, imagine the puck's in the corner and it's being carried out. You are at your home base position here. As the puck comes out above that line, you're going to bump up. So now we're at the black dashed arrow, represents the puck carrier. You're going to bump up towards these hash marks. As you get closer to those hash marks, you're going to bump off the boards. You're going to attack the puck carrier, pivot your feet, and then get back to the boards. That way you're able to get around the play and stay out of the way. The bottom line of this maneuver is that you want to commit to it, do it fast and attack the play. You don't want to come off the boards and wait. You come off the boards, attack and get back to the boards. And it works the same going the other direction as well. Puck comes towards you as the official or as the referee in the end zone. You're gonna bump off the boards as you get closer to the goal line, off the boards towards the play, pivot your heels so they point to where you wanna go, get back to the boards and you're back in position for the play being in the far corner without getting in the way. So that's the bump and pivot. More information is found in Appendix A of How to Referee Hockey. So there's two main errors that are gonna come up when we're using end zone positioning as the referee and they both relate to the same thing. It's your anxiety of wanting to keep up with the play. So people go and they jump thinking the play is gonna leave the zone and then they end up not being in the right position. The first one is I call yo-yoing. And if you just watch this, if you just watch the puck move and the referee down here, you'll see the referee is gonna yo-yo as the puck moves around the zone. Back and forth. And the reason this is happening is because the referee is thinking the puck's gonna leave the zone and they're trying to anticipate it to get into the right position. But of course, it doesn't put them in the right position, it just makes them waste their energy going back and forth, back and forth. The solution is to maintain half piston position until you clearly have a breakout. Remember, you're one to two lines behind the play at this point. As long as that puck is in your zone, you're always one to two lines behind the play. So you don't have to jump and try to try to catch up to the play because the play hasn't left your zone. So we just have to maintain that piston system and allow the players to play with the puck. So now the puck's moving, but no matter where it goes, that referee can just stay there in home base, sorry, half piston, and watch the play move. One more time, you just watch the play move from half piston. There's no need to go bouncing around the zone. The second one, I call it happy feet, and it's very similar except instead of a back and forth, it's almost like you're doing laps around the circle. So as the puck moves, the referee just moves around the circle. They dance around that circle, hence why I call it happy feet. The solution to this one is once again, maintain your half piston positioning in order to make sure that you're one to two lines behind the play always one just another two lines behind the play you don't have to stress about it because as long as that puck is in that zone you are one to two lines behind the play so yo-yoing and happy feet both have the same solution trust yourself stay at half piston allow the play to move around on the far side of the ice while you stay at half piston to maintain energy and also to avoid to avoid being out of position which brings us to the big question is how do I anticipate the play leaving the zone? Because what you're gonna have to do as a referee is you have to be able to skate up the ice and get to the far end zone fast enough so that you're in position to make a, a call of goal or no goal at the far net. So you have to be able to anticipate that and follow the play up the ice, but at the same time, you can't leave the current zone too soon because that'll put you out of position. So how is it that you're going to make this choice? So we know that if the puck, this red arrow stays in the zone, we stay at half piston. If the puck leaves the zone, 
green, go, we have to go with the puck up the ice. So let's ask ourselves four questions here and we can start to think about how it is that we choose to leave the zone or not. First question, is there pressure on the breakout? So let's say that you have this situation here where the team is carrying the puck out, but there's three players right around them that are going to put pressure on the puck carrier. Chances are that puck's not going to leave the zone. You maintain half piston. Has the breakout been effective this game? So you've watched some of the game already. You'll notice teams that can break the puck out and teams that can't break the puck out. So the question becomes, if the team's been terrible breaking out the puck so far in the game, can you guess that it's going to take them four tries this time? Yes, absolutely. If they've been bad so far this game, keep your piston system. Right? longer than you would. If they've been really effective and you know they're breaking it out in the first try every time, you can follow them up the ice faster. Which team has carrying the puck? This one seems really obvious. If the home team has the puck, sorry, if the defensive team has the puck, get ready for a breakout. If the offensive team has the puck, such as for yo-yoing or happy feet, and they're playing with the puck back and forth to the defense person, down to the winger, trying to make a play in front of the net, you just maintain half piston. You don't have to follow them up the ice because the offensive team has the puck. Stay in piston system. The blue one, are you one to two lines behind? So you are one to two lines behind by definition as long as the puck is in the offensive zone. Once the puck leaves that zone, you need to follow up towards the first blue line in order to maintain your one to two lines behind the play. But as long as it's in your zone, by definition, it's one to two lines in front of you so you can maintain your, your place in that zone. You don't have to try to jump. So. Is there pressure on the breakout? Has the breakout been effective previously this game? Which team's carrying the puck? And are you one to two lines behind the play currently? Those are all questions you can ask yourself to reflect and figure out if you are jumping too fast to follow the play up the ice. Ultimately, if you guess wrong, just get back to piston system and then readjust and make sure you do it better next time. So that's making the decision to do a zone exit. So let's imagine that our imaginary game now, the teams are going back and forth. Now we have to think about energy conservation because in a game, a referee skates back and forth on the ice between four and six kilometers per game. So what you're gonna be trying to do as you move up and down the ice is you're gonna be trying to move in a figure eight. So rather than doing stops and starts to change direction, we're gonna work on doing that figure eight up and down the ice as the play progresses. However, there's more to it than just that because it's a lot about timing as well because our goal as we do this figure eight is to curl down below the play because the play is going up and down the ice, curl down below the play and then get up underneath the play and follow it up the ice. So if we watch this this time, if we watch this this time, we're going to pause at this blue line. As you come up to the blue line, you can see the puck is below the net right now. You have to make a decision about your timing to come down below the play and follow the play up the ice. So if we watch the animation, there goes the puck and the referee is now below the play as the breakout happens. And you're able to see as much of the ice as possible because the puck moves faster than most people on skates. You're very quickly going to end up one to two lines behind the play. There it goes, and you just stay one to two lines behind the play as it goes up the ice, and then you continue on. So when we're thinking about back and forth play, the, we have really four things that we have to think about. I've mentioned a couple of them already. Your movement's gonna take the path of a figure eight, and you're gonna want to minimize your stops as much as possible. The referee is gonna try to curl down below the play and then follow the play up the ice. If the play's on the far side of the ice from you, so if the play's on this side of the ice, you're going to try to skate the dots on your side of the ice. If the puck's on your side of the ice, you're gonna to try to skate closer to the boards and adjust your figure eight pattern that way. And you're always trying to work on a figure eight when you have a flow of play going up and down the ice, following those rules, and you'll find that you have better energy conservation uh, as well as a better ability to keep up with the play and be in the right position to make calls, judgments, or whatever it is you have to do at any point in time during a hockey game. So that's positioning for referees in the three official system. Till the next video, know your job, do your job.